Welcome to the Action Shooting Show. Tonight uh, we have um, Tiger and we have Mark. So, and me as uh, always. So, oh shit. Welcome to the Action Shooting Show. The re- I'm really confused. The recording took forever to start, so we'll see what happens. Maybe there's two intros here. <laughs> me, Ryan, Tiger, Mark, st- starting off. Great as always. So, tonight we're doing a quick after-action report. And I say quick, this is going to be a lot quicker than our normal after-actions. Because I'm the only one here that shot it, and these guys are going to kind of ask some questions. So, um, Ma- or, uh, Tiger, let's kick it off. Okay, so first of all, you didn't you didn't say what the AAR is over, so, so give us the title of the match, where it was, um, <coughs> and, and general, like, match flavor that you got as a participant uh because this is the first time you've ran this match i believe yes correct um that's like i've never done one of these before yes this is after action on the gun run the team match so ellis puts these on and uh this one was down <coughs> at the sawmill range which is which is phenomenal um, I've been wanting to do one of Ellis's matches for a while. I mean, I've shot a number of matches with them and worked with them and gone out, you know, to dinner with them after matches and haven't got a chance to shoot his match. He runs a lot of these gun run, um, matches down in, um, South Carolina, North Carolina. I know it does in West Virginia. I think there's a couple in Georgia, maybe Alabama. So <laughs> yeah. So kind of the East coast. You know, they, South, have a, they have a good website. We'll put the website in the thing because they have a, a website with all their races, and then they have yeah. links to other races as well. So we'll yeah, put that true. in the yeah, description. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I can get that in there. So um, first time shooting it, it was awesome. Uh, match flavor, it's kind of a standard running gun. Five, uh, five k, pretty darn close to five k. We got, <clears throat> excuse me. We got lost, and I think we still ended up with like 3.4 miles. So um, just a very standard 5K, six stages during it, and a uh, little bit of physical stuff, but not not really. So, I mean, this is pretty much like if you ever did one of Matt Stinnett's early March matches or um, just, just, yeah, standard running gun. I mean, there's not, nothing nothing fancy about it. So you say we. Let's Let's clarify that. What do you mean by we? Yeah, excuse me. As I said, it was a it was a team match, so it was me and a friend of mine, Richie Brickler. He was actually the one that invited me to it. So, um, as a team, you start at the beginning, you do all the obstacles together. There was a uh, we'll get in that small obstacle course, nothing big, um, and then those six stages you all shot as a team. Were there any special divisions, you know, weight classes, things like that, guns, equipment? Uh, as far as I know, I have to look back on it. I think there was just one just team match. There was no divisions. It was the standard run what you brung, as they say, as Mark well, likes fairly, to say. like Fairly straightforward, simple, yeah. show up, run what you got. Yep, exactly. Yeah, bring the team that you have, the gear that you have, and – and and do it and with the match there really wasn't a need for anything crazy i mean i think the furthest we went out was like 340 so even your short barrel ars can handle that i mean you need a dmr rifle everything was very reasonable sized targets what i consider reasonable for like a carbine it's a carbine match you know so um i guess do you want me to start getting into the stages then yeah. Real quick. So we'll keep this going. Uh, so you start off, start uh, up near the clubhouse area. Um, they had a real small obstacle course. Like you climbed through a window thing. You went over a <coughs> – you and your teammate went over a wall. And then you climbed over like a net. Just something right off the bat. Get your heart rate going. Nothing crazy hard. It was kind of like a, a triangle of a net. goes up and down. Nothing crazy. It, anyone could do it with a little bit of, you know – physicality so right from there wasn't that far i mean you could see the first stage from the starting line so 100 yards maybe 200 yards um 
you and your teammates started, both of you went in different directions. They had, in two different places, they had con trailers, basically, set up into, like, structures. So I went to the left, climbed up a ladder to the second row. My partner went up a set of stairs to the right. Each of us came into windows, you know, one on the left, one on the right. And they had three targets out there at 35 yards or something. So you're kind of two stories up, 35-yard targets um, with... Pistol, I think first, you had to shoot each of them once. Your partner shot e- or shot each of them twice. Your partner shot each of them twice. The kind of teamwork get to communicate a little because, like, I started on the left. I'd start on the left. On the right, he started on the right, and I'm shooting these targets. Whoever gets the middle one first has to call it because if you're each kind of trying to shoot at the middle target at the same time, your ROs are going to have trouble calling hits. So, like, each time um, – actually, I take that back. I, that was only pistol in that. Yeah, so each time I got to that center plate first. So I'm going, you know, center plate. So I'd hit that, and then I'd go on to his first target after he got it. He'd go on to the middle one, you know, or the right one in the middle. So um, you did that. Then you swap positions. You know, you had to holster, go swap positions. Same thing. Shoot all of those again. Once that was done, you know, each person got their – hits on three targets um we ran back down to where we started there was a like a dummy for a dummy drag there was a alice pack type thing and then there was like a a simulated m16 you know blue gun type thing i got there first because i was going downstairs which are a little faster than the the ladder so i grabbed the dummy thinking that was the heavier one and, and it probably was Started dragging that. He grabbed the pack and the gun, and you once you hit the finish line, the the time's over. You know they, I guess, slap the timer and your time's over. So, um, pretty straightforward. I said that. I mean, the targets are eight inch plates, probably six. I mean, uh, reasonable size targets, not too far away. Just just a challenge to k- get your hits from an elevated position and and communicate as a team. So most of the team or most of the stages, I thought the team element was well represented. Sometimes you rely a little bit more heavily on communications. Sometimes it was just kind of do your thing. So I guess any questions on that before we uh, we go on? Just the the idea that the last shot wasn't the what stopped the timer. Is that would you say that was key that it was you had to stop it some other way? It wasn't a shot. Stop the timer. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that because I'm pretty sure your time didn't stop until you got done with that. You know, cross okay. the finish line. So, okay. I, you know, you get at that running guns, um, because there was no last shot as far as that, and I'm, I, I'm fairly certain all that other stuff was on the clock. So, so I just, I'm just throwing this out there because both of you guys are match directors. You know, when we talk about competitive equity. That's one of those things where now we're relying on the ROs to give you that last shot. And and you got Bob that's a little bit slow on the clap, and then maybe it didn't catch. And who's to say that it didn't catch or did catch? It didn't feel like a problem to you, though, would you say? No, no, no. but I'm, I'm not – I'm a match director. I try to have fake match – or fair matches. Fake match. <laughs> if, if it was my match – Maybe I would have moved that to the beginning because uh, generally, like Mark, I don't I don't necessarily rely like relying on having an RO have to like smack a timer. But at the same time, like the stage was fun. That challenge at the end was fun. I could see why you would put it at the end so people aren't yeah. timing. You know, people would rather time out pulling a dummy than shooting. So um, I guess if you were in it to win it, maybe that would be a big deal. But I I didn't really I didn't care. As a as a match director, I uh, I look at that, and you're right. Like people would rather time out dragging the dummy versus not being able to drag the dummy and never firing a shot, right? Um, and 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 I'm a little bit I don't know maybe I'm the weirdo when it comes to competitive equity. Um, my version of competitive equity is as long as I'm not giving Mark a advantage on purpose over Ryan. That's fair, right? Like the randomness of shit is fine with me personally, um, you know. And I, and and people kind of harp on me about it at Zombie. I'm like, look, 
this guy shot in the morning, this guy shot in the afternoon. They ran two completely different matches. There is nothing I can do about the fucking location of the sun. Like, <laughs> like you know, um, but, but like, and I would have probably put a stop plate in uh, after all of the dummy drags, right? Like, okay, you do all of this stuff. There's one more target you have to hit. That's your stop plate. Like, but if nobody thought it was a big deal, then, then it's obviously okay. Right. Like, right. Exactly. So, and, and I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion. If something adds fun to the match, excitement to the match, if there's a little bit of variability to right. how it's scored, you know, the, I mean, we're the split second that it's it, the timer smack, like I, I'm all right with that. You know, I, Al Cockrell, who was one of the MDs of the Pawnee match for 15 years, uh, hates shot timers. He he's a stopwatch guy when it comes to when it comes to stages, which I'm not either. I like shot timers, um, but he's like, look, guys, this isn't the Olympics, right? Like, it's <laughs> you're not winning gold medals here. But at the same time, like at my match. Like, I have some pretty big prizes that people win or lose based off of split seconds. So I want shot timers. But if you don't have all of that, then really it doesn't matter. Then it's bragging rights, right? So, yeah. So I shook, yeah, no, I I shook my head at that because I hate that. If you're running a stopwatch, yeah. I don't trust you. I don't care. I know that you think that I'm good and I think we're good. And yeah, we're we're all equal. I, I guess we don't swear on this channel, but... Please I do. don't use that. <laughs> you know, like, I don't trust you on a stopwatch. I'll, I'll take a slap on the timer. That's fine. I can live with that. But it's got to be a timer for me. I'll, I will personally bring my timer and borrow yeah, it out to, to anybody if they yeah. want to do it. And I have run yeah. ra matches where they were running a stopwatch. And if I would know that, I'd, I'd run to the truck and get... You know, like, please run this instead. Just anything better. That's just my personal opinion. You know, well, maybe especially we'll debate that now, in the timers are you can get a good timer for a hundred bucks. Like, Wait, well, there's a you lot can't of say, you, you can, or less. You can't say now, you can't say now you get them for a hundred dollars. They well just been a hundred dollars, and that's yeah, but saying. there's like, okay, there's a ton of cost, there's a ton of good options now on shot timers that are $150 or less. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And to, I guess to Mark's point, like people are like, whoa, they're expensive and we have to have, well, the steel for the match is expensive. Like there's a lot of expenses in a match. So and yeah, everything uh, is I expensive. See a, <laughs> yeah. I see a big difference between a timer, a shot, you know, stopwatch and someone slapping a timer. So um, in this case, yeah. it probably didn't affect the results at all in a match. So I was fine with it because it was a fun Honestly, challenge. So. Honestly, you can get free shot timer apps on your phone that are relatively okay. Like, they're I, better I, than a stopwatch. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Or, you know, throwing this out there, if you're a match director watching this and you know you have 70 competitors, I guarantee 30 of 70 have a shot timer and will say, yeah. hello, sir, here's my shot timer. <clears throat> Use it. Give it back to me at the end of the match. Like M Most the, every, the, the most every is, RO I know. Most every regular RO has. I, right. I've got. I could grab three shot timers right now. Like my shot I, I, timer I, literally I, just died last week, and I'm going to be ordering one in the next week or two. Like right. I, order two, order two. Don't I, even yeah. don't even screw around with it. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I literally have one on the back Molly panel of my truck. It is always with me. If there's a match breaks out somewhere, I have a shot timer ready to go. Let's move on so we don't drag that out too much. So stage two, this was kind of fun. Um, Bosco, is it Bosco uh, Wang? Is it we. How he is on I don't know how we? you pronounce the last name. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of interesting. So you started next to each other with rifle. On the beat, you could shoot. You had four targets to shoot. You had to shoot them consecutively. Um. You could do it in any position you wanted. They had like a metal, like electrical box right there. So I think 90% of the people probably just went down and rested on that. But um, so one partner had to shoot it. The next person had to make the hit. If they didn't, you had to shoot again. And you basically had to both hit it one than the other. 
So you did that on four targets twice. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then they had a little bit further out. And I'd say those were like 75 to 100 yards. Fairly easy. I mean, we didn't drop any shots on it. It's pretty, pretty. If you, if you got good dope and you can aim and break a good shot, you're, you're probably going to hit it. So first time through, we were, because he shot first and then I went, I was a little conservative on my really getting a good sight picture, really getting a good. By the second time through, it was like, bop, 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 bop. You know, as soon as his shot broke, I was breaking my shot. Because, I, I, you know, you first time you touched a rifle of the match, getting comfortable. So, bop, 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 you know, straight through. Then you had a high value, drop magazine. Each of you put a target on. It's like a bonus target. So, if you hit it, you got bonus points. If you missed, it wasn't a penalty to you, but you just didn't get the bonus points. So, we got that. Gun's empty now. Um, you run forward about 25 yards. They had a bus there, kind of in a pit, you know, lower down. Um, guy on the left shoots a activator that activates a swinging target. And they just said movers. I, we didn't know what it was. Guy on the right, which was me, shot a popper. And it was actually like a mover that like went across, the, you know, went from like behind the bus to behind a barrel. <coughs> so um, we get up there. He shoots his. I shoot mine. I actually shot the popper. I heard the ding, and it didn't go down. So shot the popper again. Didn't know, you know, it's like waiting to see if this thing went down. Next thing I know, this activator starts swinging across, and you had to get, on each of them, you had to get four hits, which was quite the challenge. I mean, I got all four shots off. I was trying to break a fifth shot when it, like, disappeared behind the barrel. Uh, Ended up getting all four, so that was clean. He got his four, but I think that was the second highest failure rate on that. Um, and, and are the movers paper? They, I think they were like self-healing. That like self-healing rubber, rubber that you just, you just okay. spray paint. So um, you know, it was like a full-size silhouette. So it was like yeah. a fairly reasonable target. I, it's probably seven to ten yards. But I'll say being the right side guy, because it was m- disappeared move disappeared you really had to be on your your trigger like once once i got on and it was like bop 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 i mean you had to get your shots because it was moving quick the uh the swinger you you had all the time in the world on that so um that was a fun stage you don't see (coughs) excuse me (coughs) activators a lot in running gun so um that that was kind of nice um I know they did. I think Bosco himself actually shot the cable on one of the activators. So I don't know what they did for him if he had to reshoot or what. You know, that's kind of the reason you don't see activators because they're not always 100%. And reshoots and run and gun is a much bigger deal than a reshoot at a, a three gun or a USPSA match. Especially, I guess here's a MD trick for you if you activators at the beginning of the stage, not at the end. Because if you start with an activator and it doesn't activate, you just reset it and you, you go. If you end with an activator and it doesn't activate, <coughs> now someone's got to reshoot and you got to reset it the whole stage. Um, I do that a lot. They've wasted a bunch of ammo. Yes, they've wasted. And, and running gun, time and ammo is a much bigger deal. Three gun, not such a big deal, but it's still the setup time and the reset time kind of adds up. <coughs> So going going to that as a match director, reset. Did you reset that, or did somebody else reset that? Because that's always another thing. We shoot steel because steel doesn't have to be reset. So I'm guessing you didn't run out there and drag the thing back out there and set it up and put the thing. So talk about no, that from no, a match director yeah. standpoint. The the the, <coughs> the <coughs> excuse me, the ROs reset that. So they went scored it real quick. I think hit it with spray paint and then. You know, I guess reactivate it. Once they scored it and told us it was good, we took off to the next stage. So, um, but they had two or three ROs there. So the ROs were the ones resetting, resetting that. So, um, yeah, that was fun. I didn't mention earlier, Ellis matches are, um, because it kind of splits two ways with running guns. He is a DNF, is a zero. So, like, on that stage, if you dropped a shot, I think that was why it was the second highest failure rate if you drop one shot on that mover only had three on the target instead of four zero points for the stage so um 
<clears throat> and that's uh, as far as I understood it, that's how it was scored. I mean, we we got it, so it wasn't an issue. But it it was a a tough. A, that's a tough stage because because yeah. a quick mover like that, it doesn't take much to to drop a shot. Like I said, just the split second of me not knowing whether the steel had gone down or not, I, the thing was almost halfway across the the mover. So usually, if I have anything that's paper scored, that's a penalty. Like you have, if you don't clear all the steel, then then that then you DNF the stage. But if you don't clear the paper like clean or whatever, then those are penalties. Is usually how I do that. Yeah. So that's as far as I understood from talking to other people is a DNF. So, um, which That's that awesome. is what it is, <laughs> yeah. you know, going in. Yeah. So, uh, from there, we went down the road. We, uh, we got lost here. He had a sign that said, you know, with an arrow and it said up the cut, you know, or something like that. I saw a like drainage cut, you know, and brush. And I'm like, oh, we're going up the drainage brush. Well, we get up to the top of that and it's not real far. And we're looking around. We're kind of going left, right. Like we can't find it. Finally, we circle back to the beginning of where we saw that sign. We're like, well, let's go back to the last place we saw a sign. Well, if you went another 10 yards, there was a power line cut going way up this hill. So we're like, oh, power line cut. Okay, that makes sense. Most of the people didn't have that problem because Ellis has seems to have a really good crew of like repeat shooters that have all shot this. The stage was, I guess the course was reversed from normal. But anyone who's been on that knows they go up and down the power line cut. So um, it cost us five minutes or something. It's not a big deal. I mean, he had it labeled. It was just I took the definition of cut being different than if it said power line cut, I would have known. So uh, head up the hill. Stuff, we see this stuff in, in running <clears throat> all the time, though. Like it always seems, you know, no offense to Tiger or anybody else. It always seems clearer to the match director or the first crew. It's like. Literally, if I cannot see the flag on the next thing, you know, like you have to be standing in a position and see the next flag. And when you get to the next flag, you see that, you know, we can argue. I, I've never done his matches. I'm sure they're great. But, you know, like you can't trust that the local guys are going to be the ones that get this. And then you have the old Ohio boys that come down. Yeah. Like it's. It it's well, tough. I, I meant, what do you do? What yeah, do you do, I, really? You know, like yeah, I mentioned it to him just as like uh, okay, ROs. We were fairly early in the day. Like okay, ROs go out. If I see something that, on a course that I'm like, hey, this could be more clear. Yes. I'm gonna let the uh, the MD know whether they they may feel like it needs done or maybe it doesn't. I I don't think he changed it. And actually, he's like, I figure if anyone was gonna get lost, it was gonna be you guys because you just never <laughs> been here before. And I was like, well, fair fair enough. And it, and, cost and, us much you know and i've straight up said like if i could run like if i could afford to run a ribbon or even like a steel cable that i tie your ass to the whole <laughs> seven miles right like people so, would still get would lost, still get lost. Right. Yeah, they, they would so like, it was like no big deal same, at the same yeah. time though a thousand feet of caution tape is like nothing and you know you can put that on every little tree branch the entire way and we've Except talked about this on another match quick. it gets it, eaten up because uh, it because does. A, a visible piece of caution tape is at least two feet long so yeah. that's enough for 500 markers so let's say that you do a 10k that's 6.2 miles right so that's 30,000 30, some odd 30,000 30, feet yeah. Yeah. so you need 600 plus markers if you do, a, and that's if you cut a perfect two foot section and tie it to <clears> something <throat> immediately visible. Most of them are three feet, four feet. Like it goes a lot faster than you think, but you're right. But like I marked this past year and my entire course was side by side trails. Like if yeah. you were off of a side by side trail, you were wrong. That's not going to be the case this year. But I still. still not, we were this close well, to getting lost on your trail this year. Yeah. And yeah. and, and well, people, did hard get lost. people did get lost on your trail this yeah. year. We thought about going back and we didn't. And then the what was the team? The Miami Vice team got lost. Yeah. And so it, it happens. I mean, like this it's, trail. Yeah. Let, let me know, put Ryan it this got way. lost a couple of years ago. I mean, it it happened. Uh -oh. That's because we went like second or third, and Tiger hadn't marked that section yet. Sure, sure. <laughs> that Tiger, we yeah, went I, around. 
and they were supposed to go through, but there was no tape there yet. Yeah. And but so the the at I the end guess of the day, and, you have people who are tired and not paying attention. Yeah, I guess as devil's advocate for this, where we were at, if we would have looked around and been a little less focused in on just that sign and just that specific spot, we probably would have seen the power line cut like we did the second time when we said, hey, something, we're missing something here. And, I mean, before we started this, before Mark got on, me and Tiger were talking about these matches, a lot of people treat them as a training element for real world happenings and not being hyper focused in on things and really being aware of the big picture is an important skill. So for me, I, me and him should have been like a little less focused in on just that sign and right there and maybe look, like I said, less than 10 yards ahead. So um, that's a good insight. I, we can't yeah. take that away. That's a good insight. You yeah, gotta, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and it, yeah. So it is what it is, but, Anyways, we don't. I don't want to get too caught up on that. Well, and one last thing on that. Like, honestly, one of my favorite activities as a kid was my dad would go out, like, just through random woods lines. We'd be out mushroom hunting or something, and he would, like, push a rock, break a limb, step on leaves here for, like, 200 yards. You know, I was seven, eight, nine years old, and he'd be like, okay, come find me. Like, follow my trail, right? Like, he would. he was teaching me how to pick up inconsistencies in the woods which is what a freaking flag is right <laughs> like it's an inconsistency yeah i mean we were the second or third ones out for the yeah. you know an RO day so like there probably wasn't a whole lot to to pick up especially in like a big i mean it's just a brush hogged hill yeah so right. Tiger, yeah, god but, bless your dad i don't know how he didn't lose you out there he was trying his best and <laughs> 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 it wasn't for lack of effort it sounds like no All right. i was i was so, <laughs> up, this, up this power line cut not as bad as rock castle's power line cut but brush hog heavy still it, a power it line cut. <laughs> uh, yeah i've never been up a power line cut and thought like this is this is smooth sailing you know <laughs> so <laughs> we, we get to the next stage uh, i'm trying to think there's a bunch of big huge industrial tires all stacked up i mean these are like think monster truck size tires like you're not these aren't crossfit flipping tires these are like two or three people would be lucky to flip them so um on the beep as soon as one it was a kind of a bounding fire i guess uh targets at like 250 300 or something again reasonable size targets if you missed it was your fault it wasn't because it was like a little tiny tire target too far out there so on the beat the first person makes a position starts shooting two or three targets it's been a couple weeks so i forget the exact number while he's doing that the next guy runs around those tires gets to position two <coughs> once the first guy clears all his targets and i think they're the same targets for for the whole shooting stage but he hollers to the next guy as soon as that guy starts shooting you can start bounding so bound up past him, um, this first two positions were kind of up near the tires. So weird angles. It was not an easy position being early on in the weekend. There was like, I was shooting through brush. Like I could see sticks in my way. And a couple of times I could see sticks falling. Like I knew they're in my way. That's just where it is for the position. So it's like, I'm either going to shoot and miss it, or I'm going to shoot through it. And then the next tar shot, <laughs> it won't be in the way, you know? So shot through some sticks, go, he shoots. My next position actually was even worse in foliage. <laughs> You're kind of, <coughs> excuse me, kind of near a rock. I went forward of that on like a limb, hoping I could get up a little higher and get some stability. And it was, it was way too wobbly. So I had to go back to the rock. And again, I'm, I think Ellis and his teammate went before me. I'm sure they shot through some stuff, but, um, you know, shot through that, and then my partner shot his last stage. So, <laughs> position. So, two positions a person, two or three targets a person. <coughs> Just, I guess, standard bounding fire kind of stage. So, like, clearly, this is where 762 is, is the ultimate run-and-gun kind of thing. You know, if you're shooting through brush, 
maybe even, you know, these Ohio people that don't know any better running 350 Legend, you know, something like that. 4570. 458 SOCOM. Yeah, exactly. You know, like that kind of thing where where you can't trust the match director to understand decent people shoot 22 caliber bullets. And, you know, you really have to kind of work through the the deficiencies of their imagination, right? Honestly, the real cheat code for a stage like that is to be last on competitors day on Saturday, because I guarantee you there was, there was nothing. It's like a jungle run and three gun. I was just going to say, yep. Squad on a jungle run and three gun. Everything is hidden. And then if you're the last day, the last squad, it's just, it's like, up. there's three there. There's three there. There's, there's nothing to remember. It's not hidden, you know. It's it's like it's a jungle after the uh, F4s have been in and napalmed everything or whatever. You know, the F1 the 12 gauge or doesn't lie. There's nothing hidden yeah. by 12 gauge. <laughs> so fun stage. Uh, one thing I appreciated, and I've said it a couple times here, Ellis's targets for like these matches attract ARs, AKs, those kind of guns you know this they're not they're not prs matches all the target sizes i felt were reasonable they weren't giant it wasn't like just close your eyes and shoot at it but if you had good dope and you held anywhere close to what your hold should be you could guess is that 200 or 250 or three like i'm gonna hold a little high of my 250 you're gonna hit it and that and that's what these guns are made for that's what these you know they're, they're not man. DMR. Yeah, point of man, exactly. So um, not that I don't mind some more precision at times, but I think sometimes people get away with making things hard when it's like, eh, these are the, this is a patrol. Like, if they're 500 yards away and they're the size of a grapefruit, I'm probably not shooting at it with my AR. Like, you have to give me some really good reasons to want to wanna shoot that. So I I thought his target presentations and everything, pistol, rifle, the distance and the size of the target is like, it's a challenge, but it's a reasonable challenge. So I I, I definitely appreciated that. Uh, Anything else? Well, no. So I was shit talking this. I was being stupid and saying like, you need 762. But this is the kind of thing that goes to a Facebook forum where people say like, well, you know, I was at Ellis's match and I was hitting tree branches and stuff like that, and I wasn't touching anything. Like, when you go back to 15 minutes in this conversation, is this a practical event? Is this testing what we would do in a happening kind of thing? And now you start to wonder, like, well, shit, I did hit a lot of tree branches with my 223 and they didn't touch anything. And so you start to wonder, like, you know, you you're the good idea fairy is the classic thing that comes in. It's like, well, I could have, it didn't hurt me in weight to carry 762 by 39. I, I could even carry supersonic 300 blackout. Why, That's why, why was I limiting eight. myself? Right. Yeah, well, exactly. You, you know, so. it's, it's funny. Cause I had this exact conversation with, uh, with some guys, we had a small, like private run and gun, the 2018 might have been yeah it was 2018 it was in like june of 2018 and this farm down in kentucky was wanting to put some on they and they let us go out and build stages and then we we hiked a course and and in one of the spots we cleared with machetes and axes probably a half acre of brush and random shit to get three shooting lanes 75 yards long from this one position and we talked about it that day we were like you know suddenly that 12 gauge shotgun like looks real good right because 50 yards like there's not a whole lot that beats a 12 gauge slug at 50 for for pure slug (laughs) plus shots well, let's right. go back to what's let's talk practically here. We're going straight to Vietnam flesh but, but you know, we, we talked about it, like everybody talks about rifles as being so much more practical than shotguns. And I'm one of them. I can't stand the practicality of a shotgun because for 99% of my life, it's not right. Like 
I, I like rifles. They're, I, love, they're... I love shooting shotguns. I, there's not a lot practical, except for bird hunting. There's right. not a lot of things that would make me go, oh, yeah, the shotgun's the way. I, if you got to breach your door, I guess a shotgun's yeah. a, a pretty good well, option. If you're, in, if you're in thick, heavy jungle, you know, a, a 16-inch barrel tactical 12-gauge is, is not a bad way to go. But, yeah. you know, it's... So yeah, it, it's you got you like you said the good idea fairy. Like, why are we not all carrying, you know, three thirty eight Winchesters, right? Like, I need, <laughs> so I need a master key underneath my AR that yeah. I can run yeah. slugs and I am I am God down wills with it. it. God wills yeah. it. <laughs> I am down with this. There's gonna be some people with uh, braced uh, shotguns for sale here soon. So uh, actually, actually, hold on. Jeff that and a three sent me a picture today. Hold that on. and a three D printer. I think I can make a mount. That's all I'm saying. Do you think M Lock would hold a twelve gauge? That's that's the first important question. It and would, if not, it would hold the shockwave. Zip zip ties <laughs> and duct tape is my next option. So, so he sends me this picture. This and he's like, "Here's the new decision for zombie." Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I okay. So I got my I got some kit to work out here for running gun. Um, there you go. Let's, let's move on before this spirals more out of control <laughs> yeah. than it already. Yeah, is. We're, 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 we're we at? Right Ryan, now. we're lost here. Just tell us yeah. about how how do we get to the end and how do you feel about this match? Stage three. Stage three. On to stage four. The I guess long range stage because you had shots out to four thirty. I think four forty something like that is what we lays them at. Um, this had the this is where we are. This had the highest rate of uh, DNFs, which makes sense. And it was a very doable stage. Um, they gave you a card. You used the same gun for both shooters, so you picked one. So you had to get be comfortable shooting a teammate's gun. <clears throat> On the beat, the first guy goes to shoot any position he wants. We went prone. I had a backpack. We used that to rest on. Uh, I shot first. My partner. Uh, read the range card to me. I saw, this is a side note, I saw, because I, I crap, I kind of harass people in run and gun because a lot of people go prone in run and gun for targets that they don't need to go prone on. This was a good stage to go prone on. And I saw more than, I saw a number of people shooting it off, trying to shoot offhand, trying to like kneel or do seated. If you're doing kneeling or seated and you can shoot prone, just go prone. You're doing from like, 175, some like bigger poppers out to three or four thirty or whatever. Like freaking go prone. Like it's it's dumb not to. But anyway. So wait, let, <clears throat> wait. Let's be clear. Just imagine that somebody that's watching this actually wants to learn something, and they're not just trying to get through work listening to us us ramble on. Uh, yeah. The reason to not go prone is that you have to get back up. If you Correct. can go prone <clears throat> and finish all your shooting prone. Go prone. As much contact yeah. with the ground, that's what you want. This is uh, yeah. hot tips. Now you've listened to us for 30 plus minutes, whatever yeah. we're into this podcast. Now you're getting so, into the hot tips. If you don't have to get up, yeah. that's prone. And sometimes even when you have to get up, go prone. My thing is if it's – there are shots that should be easy enough to do offhand with you know a, a common or, rifle shooter that people are getting – yeah, or from a kneeling, and they're going prone on it. This case, it, it, go prone. So your your partner had a range card, and out there, between 175 and like, or I, I, it was 340. I don't think it was 400. I think it was 340. From there, you had a dozen targets. Your partner looked at the range card and had to describe to you which target to shoot and how many times going left to right. So there's a lot of targets out there. So. And, and there was efficient ways to do it and very inefficient ways. So one thing that really helped, if you were a good team, I guarantee you, you did this. There was a, it looked like the front end of a Jeep. It was some kind of metal thing, but they'd spray painted headlights and like the Jeep, you know, this typical Jeep uh, grill. <clears throat> First target was just left of that. So my partner, hey, do you see that thing that kind of looks like a Jeep out there? Yes. First target to the left, two shots. Bing, bing. Okay. From there to the other side of the Jeep, go directly over, same level, that target. You see it? Yeah. Okay. Three times. Bing, bing, bing. Okay. Go down at a 
what do you, uh, five o'clock degree. Okay. And he just walked me through the targets that way. If you, if you did something like that, you know, from one to the next, it worked out really well from there. It was like, you know, see further on the berm. There's two targets that look right next to each other. Yes. The left one, four times, yada, yada. Um, you did that. You were, and you made your hits. It was a pretty simple stage. I shot pretty well. He gave me great directions. We got through that. When it was my turn, I got up and grabbed the card. He got down. I got myself a little confused. They had said left to right, which I had paid attention to, but then got focused on shooting. I got up and looked at the card, and I see a number one. And I go, oh, my head. One, this is the first target he needs to shoot. No, it's this one on the left. However many times, he just needs to shoot that once. So I'm like getting him on to a target that's not in the right order. And it took 20, 30 seconds to figure that out. Um, we made up for it once we figured it out. We, we shot lights out. Directions were good. But we ended up timing out with like a couple hits on the last target still left. Because there was like four hits or something. Um, what didn't work. Okay. You see the far left target. Yes. Don't shoot that. Okay. Count four targets over. Okay, one, two, three, or three targets over. Okay, one, two, three. So shoot that twice. So they shoot that. Okay, now from the far left, count five targets, you know, and there was people doing that, or a couple. Uh, you see the tire on the back berm that's white. Go to, I mean, like, there was some, and it's like, we, and our ROs who do, like, we're doing team matches. I guess they do some, like, sniper team matches and stuff. They were Try to give people hints or tips afterwards. Like, hey, you see that big, weird-looking structure? Like, <laughs> make that your, you know, make that your thing. Or, like, you see the very closest target? Go to that next. Don't make people count from the left five, you know, ten targets over. So, um, I it was hard <laughs> watching people time out. But uh, most targets were doable. Like, I didn't see many people just go to war. It was just the communication killed teams. And that's what it was about. I mean, that was why it was a great stage. It was a really well-designed stage. Any questions before we go on from All right, yeah. So head down a hill. It's not real far. Um, sorry, after that one, it was kind of f far. Oh, uh, we missed. At one point, the trail went through, you actually followed a creek for a little bit and you got to run through woods with just like tape in it. I want to mention that because I love running through the woods and playing and like just following creek beds and hopping back and forth. And that was a lot of fun. So after four, you head down stage five, uh, again, team <coughs> stage, uh, you started in a right near river and there was like a ditch that was real close to the river, like a low spot. Uh, you started laying down in there on the beat. The first guy gets up, um, steps out of that ditch, shoots two shots on four different targets or something like that. So one, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two, one, two. Once you finish that, or maybe it's two targets with four hits, something like that. Once you did that, you safely ground your gun. You go, lay on the ground and let your partner know you're hit. This is kind of like a simulated, like you were shooting. And you got hit. So I go on the ground. I went first because out of me and my partner, I'm probably 30 or 40 pounds lighter than him. So it seemed logical for him to drag me. <laughs> so he drags me back into the ditch. He has to put two uh, tourniquets on my legs, which was hilarious because he just like manhand. Actually, he didn't expect me to be as light as I was apparently. So when he first grabbed my arms to drag me, he dragged my head up into his nutsack real hard. And then and then he drags me in the ditch. And then he's like over top of me with his ass in my face trying to put tourniquets on. So, you know, being polite, I thanked him for shaving before the match. Because, you know, that's it's a polite thing to do in case you run into this. <laughs> Brian, so I'm just going to stop you right here. You know, this is a family-friendly show. If you want to talk about how you had a friend drag you around, tie you up, and then put their nuts in their face, that 
we can take this offline and then just get back to the shooting part. It's just I, did you want a vi- <laughs> are you asking for a video mark? Is that is that what's I'm, going on here? At this point it's so crystal clear in my face that I don't I like yeah, I don't know, you know like harder daddy that, when he's talking about do yeah, I have blood flow with the tourniquets? I don't I don't even want to know. I mean it's it's that's between you and him. It's that's a whole different thing. If, if that's you want to talk kind of a team match. You just you can't get that student by yourself. So well, turn a kitchen. Not for free. Not for no. free. Normally you pay extra for that. So <coughs> excuse me. So uh once the tourniquets were on, he had to shoot rifle, I believe, at a couple targets, and then finish off with weak hand pistol or one handed pistol. May have been weak hand. I yeah, weak hand pistol. So um but really well, fun wait, stage. What was this other hand doing? Uh checking my pulse. <laughs> Dis- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pulse. yeah, checking your pulse. <laughs> Femoral artery pulse. That's a that's a big vein. It's a good place to find a a pulse. That's what I told him. <laughs> um cool stage. Uh I'm always a little mixed with tourniquets in matches because you're never really using them completely right. But you know, you make sure that you put a couple cranks. I can say from being in medical classes, he cranked them things down tight. If he didn't knock off the, the blood flow, it was pretty darn close because my feet were going a little numb by the end. And he's basically like laying on my feet to shoot. So um, it, it was a cool stage. I mean, it was it's team match. You know, you get to do fun stuff like that. <laughs> so anything about that before we, we kind of scoot on? <laughs> All right, you pick up your stuff, you head off to sprint towards the end. There's still one stage. Um, the last stage was a really big con trailer structure, uh, three or four con trailers tall, multiple wide. I mean, it's very, very big structure. It's really, really cool. So um, he starts so on the beep. The one my teammate was taking off and going up like four flights of stairs to a like an upper uh, flat area where he could shoot. I ran off to the right side, and they had a paper target you shot with pistol, paper target you shot with rifle. Once I neutralized those, I was running up two flights to a little balcony where I had to wait for my partner to finish his shooting. So he had to get a shot or two off at this little, this was probably the smallest distance steal, and it was maybe like an eight inch or six inch at, 175 200 yards once he got that shot off um he'd call out to me let me know and i had to shoot the t- My well done what's that oh there it is you yeah we both lost you for a second there oh, after yeah. okay. you took a shot at 100 and whatever yards yeah, 175, him. I think, 200. So uh, Richie climbed up there, got his hit, hollered down at me. Well, I just waited to hear the ring. He he hollered down, but I was just waiting to hear him make contact. Once he did, I was lined up on it, and I felt really solid. For some reason, it took a couple, like two or three, four shots to get a hit on it. I don't. I think you're shooting at a downward angle, and I think the ground sloping away put more of a drop on the target than I was expecting. So I think I was, I was hitting high that that's all I could, could figure out. Um, because I I've shot targets that size uh, offhand, like a lot, like it's not. So with a good rest like that, uh, I'm not sure what I was doing to miss. It took a couple shots, but, but we got it done. So, um, neat stage, uh, that, that structure was really cool. So it's kind of fun running up and around and through rooms, you know, to get, get to, your little, your little hide, you know, your, your, uh, balcony or whatever. So, uh, once you finished up with that, it was another hundred yards, uh, run to the end. Uh, I know my partner was a little huffing and puffing and I like ran ahead and then I ran back and I'm, you know, encouraging him on and he's kind of dying and probably swearing for picking someone who is ADHD or whatever that has all this energy to burn out. But, uh, he, uh, but we finished up and it was a good time. So uh, 
that that's that's all the shooting stages. I see any questions on that last one before we kind of seem pretty straightforward. Yeah, so wrap yeah, it up. Yeah. How'd you guys do? What would you do different, Matt? You know, <clears throat> like where yeah. where would you go uh, if you went back there again? What would you do different? Um, run wise, we did okay. I think we're in mid pack there. Um, Richie, I'll give him some credit. He's been doing a ton of training and I know his like cardio, his ability is, is catching up. Um, there's some fast people there and, um, we, we did pretty good on that shooting wise. I think we're 17. Uh, we don't shoot a lot as a team together. So a little bit more of that would help. Um, me not getting confused on that stage really probably knocked us a couple spots down. But um, generally, you know, for the first kind of match we've shot this year, like major match, it, it went pretty well. I mean, there's there's a lot of good shooters there, and um, I think we were 28th overall or something like that. Like it was okay. It wasn't it wasn't amazing, but um, I, I felt <coughs> like we left some time on the table, <coughs> but not <coughs> nothing crazy. So uh, I definitely plan to go back as soon as I, you know, get the chance. It's I said eight or nine hour drive for us so it's it's just hard to do a ton of those matches where like guardian is two hours from my house i could you know if i was an ro and i could drive down there shoot it and come home that day so uh yeah i'm hoping i, I still want to get Ford out to like one of the team uh land nav matches so uh definitely plan to go back uh, ellis puts on a great match if you get a chance to do a gun run absolutely do it he does he does a lot of them every year so uh Anything else before we wrap this up, you guys? No, sounds like you guys shot great and had a good <clears throat> good result. Again, check the comments or the description. <laughs> we'll have that. The Gun Run, their website, like I said earlier, is really good because it has their matches, and then they have Pawnee, they have Guardian, they have Zombie, they have everybody. So and I, I think he's even really... got like an in- – yeah, I think he's got an intro to Running Gun, like here's kind of what Running Gun is and how to get in, so – We'll, we'll yeah, put that in the uh, – Honestly, if the Facebook page ever, like, gets nuked or zucked or whatever you want to call it, the, the Gun Runs website is a is a pretty solid start to a, to a centralized off-social media platform type spot. Yep, Ellis, Ellis does a lot for the community, and uh, he's, a, he's a super guy, so. Yeah. All right, well, sure. till next time, you guys. Thanks for watching.